So what's the system already about? Not a clue. We're going to wing it. You're going to wing this? Yeah. You just make everything up, don't you? Yeah. It's just magic. I'm just going to press the button. Slides are going to come up. I'm going to wing it. Mm. Let's what do is, it. What it's like to be you. I know, right? <laughs> I'm going to explain to you exactly why we do what we do and how everything goes down. I'm going to show you how to grow your business. These are the things that work in today's markets. You're going to love what we did in here. We're going to go start making some money. Here's how you do it. Hey, what's up, guys? John Cochran here, and today is System Saturday, the day that I bring you a system that I use in my business that you can rip off, duplicate using your own local market. Now, on today's System Saturday, what we're going to talk about is understanding real estate market cycles or real estate shifts, understanding those so that you can get a very clear picture of where the market is at, what happens in all those markets, and more importantly, how to react with, with, with the market and go with the shifts right there. So. Here's a graph, here's the market cycle. Now the market, the real estate market, it always goes into this pattern. Okay, so that is the pattern that it always goes into. Now this pattern, you know, it, it just depends on how long, you know, for the market to go up, how long does that take? Nobody knows. So it could take from optimism to excitement right here, it could take the matter of, you know, a year. It could honestly even take the matter of 10 years. It could take 20 years, it could take, but this is the pattern. That's, that's really what I want you to understand and focus on is this right here is the pattern that every single real estate market cycle goes in. Again, how long it takes to go up, we don't know. We can guess, we can predict all that stuff with research and then however far it goes down, but it always is, is doing that. It's never, it, you never have a flat real estate market, never, okay? So when you look at this from this scale and to, to kind of bring it back to terms with you, look at you know this right here is in 2002. You know, 2002, 2003, people are in optimism. 2004, uh, you know, people are starting to get excited. Oh man, the market is really, really going up. And then 2005, it's like, oh my gosh, everybody's euphoric, everybody's really, really excited about everything. 2006 comes and people are in denial. They don't, they don't think the market's going down. They're still buying like drunken sailors. 2007 comes, now they're starting to get fearful because they're like, oh my gosh, what is getting ready to happen into the marketplace? I need to start structuring things different, but by far, guys, once people get down to fear, it is far too late to start restructuring and start you know, changing your entire business or whatnot because in 2007, people start panicking. 2008, they go into depression. Cash for keys starts happening, and this is at the bottom of the market right there, and then, you know, now it's starting to go back up. Okay, so this is the cycle, and, and just to bring it back home is 2002, uh, you know, 2003, 2004, 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, you guys get it. That, that is the cycle that we just saw, and, that, and it was a fast cycle. I mean, that, that cycle literally went from a matter of, you know what, like six years, something like that. That's what it went in, but that's, a, that's the flow that it will always be in, okay? Now, what I want you to really understand is you know, by looking and understanding that that is the way that the cycles go, I'm gonna really point out some really key things that I really think that you need to know. Number one is when on this graph is the inventory high? So when do you have the most amount of inventory up onto the market, whether it's bank owned properties or it's just, you can just pick, you know, what other, whatever properties you wanna buy, you can buy. When is that? Right when the market's at its bottom, you know, people are starting to get fearful. When the prices are going down, that's when the inventory is at the all-time high, okay? When prices are down, inventory is high. And so that is gonna be right around to this, this part of the map. Now, when is inventory low? When is inventory low? Obviously, when the market is going up and you know it's an optimism, it's, it's, kind of, it's okay, inventory. People get excited. Now the inventory is very, very low up onto the market. Euphoria, it's like, where, is, where in the world is all this inventory at? We can't find any inventory up onto the market. So, this right there is when the inventory is super, super low. However, the prices are going up, up, and up, okay? So I want you to really understand that. Another thing is when are sellers actually realistic on prices? Okay, so are sellers realistic on prices whenever the market is going up? No. They're realistic on prices whenever they start to get fearful, panicking, and depression. That is when they're starting to get realistic on all their prices. You call up motivated sellers and they're basically handing you that property for whatever they owe, it doesn't matter. Right now, that's not the case. That's not the case right now of, of when I shoot this video because 
prices are going up, the, the, the sellers, they literally, uh, they, they think that they're driving this entire market right now. And it's really not the case if you look at the numbers. However, that's just when it is. So sellers are realistic on prices whenever it's uh, really about right here. Fear, panic, depression, hope, uh, and even optimism. They're realistic on their prices because they haven't caught on to the market changing or shifting yet, okay? Uh, when should you buy bank-owned properties? When is a good time to do this? So uh, I was recently at a seminar and a lot of people was just, you know, I was doing a session on stuff like this more in depth and in detail. And a lot of people were just saying, John, I had no clue that depending on where we're at here into this market, that dictates what you should be doing and how you should be marketing. And that's absolutely the truth. You have to change with the market. You shouldn't always be buying bank owned properties because what you'll realize is that your spreads are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. There's times when you can buy bank owned properties where your spreads are like that. I mean, that's when you should be buying like a drunken sailor on, on uh, bank owned properties. But when should you buy bank owned properties whenever you're looking at, you know, um, this graph right here? Right around here. That's when you should be buying bank owned properties because they're basically giving them away to you right now. So right now when we're in the market like somewhere around here, what are banks doing right now? They're putting high prices on their properties and they're getting it. Which means that, and they're creating a big uh, bidding frenzy on all their properties and they're getting what they're asking for. So uh, it's not a good time right now to buy it. However, when the market turns fearful and panicking and starts to, uh, going into depression, that's when you should be buying bank owned properties. Not necessarily right now, when they're, they're just putting stupid prices on them and then uh, people are actually paying for them. When should you buy properties on the MLS? Same exact thing, same exact thing. Uh, right when inventory is high. When inventory is high, that's when you should be going into the MLS. This is when uh, the public is broke and they cannot buy properties and you need to be buying like a drunken sailor. Bank owned properties and MLS properties, that's when you should be doing it. So right now, in the market where we're at, it doesn't really make sense to buy bank owned properties. Inventory is, or I'm sorry, uh, MLS or bank owned properties. MLS properties, the inventory is low anyways. Prices are going up. You know, people are just putting the properties up onto the MLS with unrealistic figures in there. So now is not necessarily a time to buy MLS properties as well. But when you get down here, that's when you should be. When on this map should you only buy direct from sellers? motivated sellers. When should you just, you know, just say, all right, so we're not going to go after MLS homes. We're not going to go after bank owned properties. We're not going to do any of that stuff. Let's just go direct to the seller. Let's find the sellers directly. When on this map should you be doing that? Right around here. Optimism, excitement, euphoria. That's when you should be going direct to the sellers. That's when you should be really hammering the direct mail. That's when you should be going in and pounding the direct, uh, or the bandit signs. You should be going direct to sellers right there because uh, they are not realistic on prices. However, that's when you're going to get your deals because you're not going to get the deals on the MLS. You're not going to get your deals from bank owned. You've got to go straight to motivated sellers into this swing of the marketplace. And that's where we're at right now. You know, literally for the past year and a half, we've been doing nothing but buying directly from motivated sellers. And that's where you're going to get your discounts right now. You just got to bring them into reality. When should you buy rentals? You know, on this entire thing, when is a great time to buy rentals? Is it when the market's going up? when there's uh, not much inventory? Is it when the market is going down when there is a lot of inventory? This is where you should be buying rental properties. When people are panicking, when the depression is coming in, okay? That's when you should be buying bank owned properties because there's so much inventory to pick from and what's gonna happen is the market is gonna go right back up. Okay, so the market is gonna go right back up. So when you look at it, you don't wanna buy a bank owned pro or you don't wanna buy a rental property right here in Optimism. You don't want to buy a rental property when the market doesn't have much more to go up. You definitely don't want to buy a rental property at the, uh, at the top of the market because how are you going to exit? If you need to sell that property, how are you going to exit, especially when the market goes down? So right, right around in here is when you want to start buying rental properties, holding them for a year and a day. When the market goes up, that's when you want to sell them. It only makes sense. Now, when is, and this is the last one, when is a good time to flip properties? meaning you buy properties, you're uh, putting them under contract and you're flipping them, or you're buying properties, you're fixing them up, and then you're selling them to um, you know, a retail buyer, prehab buyer, it doesn't matter what type of buyer. Any of these markets is a great time to flip properties. However, whenever you see in the excitement and euphoria when the market's going up and, it just, and it's getting ready to start, start going down, that is when you need to start really 
paying attention to get in and get out of your properties as fast as you possibly can, whether you're doing a wholesale prehab or rehab, because the, the longer it takes, guess what? The more the market is going to go down, and it can go down very, very quickly. So you need to get in, you need to get out. Now, when you're down right around here, and uh, you can still flip properties, you, you can flip in any cycle. But when you're down here, and you're flipping properties, guys, you know, you can screw up your rehab and the market is going to take everything up with you, okay? So in all these markets, it's a good flippable market. However, um, you just need to pay attention of, you know, when the market's going down, you need to use your head on how quick you need to be getting things done. That's key. That's key. That's great information right there. Now, here's the big ahas from this. When the market shifts, you got to shift with it because, you know, just like what I was saying is that, you know, now's not a great time to buy rental properties at all because w when the market starts going down or whatnot, now's not a great time to do that. Now's also not a great time to buy bank owned properties. Now's not a great time to buy MLS properties because the inventory is just so low. Okay. So when the market shifts, you got to shift with it. You've got to adapt to it. You got to do things that the market is telling you to do so that you can make a lot of money uh, into the real estate business. Um, another thing, you can't do the same amount of marketing for sellers in every single cycle. So it does not make sense to buy bank owned in every cycle. It does not make sense to do uh, bandit signs in every sing single cycle. There's numerous different things that you have to do. You have to strategically um, you know, place your marketing and choose which type of marketing depending on what part of the cycle that you're in. So that was a big aha for a lot of people when I was teaching them is that you know, they thought that, hey, I've got all these postcards, I, I can just do all this stuff forever and it doesn't matter the real estate cycle and it's not like that because as the cycle changes, the mindset of buyers and the mindset of sellers actually changes as well and they react to you differently in those times. Another big aha is there's markets when you should and you shouldn't buy bank owned properties. We've already covered that, okay? We've already covered that. So those are some really, really, really key things uh, that you need to know and another thing Guys, just read the market. Read where the market is at. Uh, do market research to keep your profits super, super high. Okay, that's what you need to do. Read the market, react to the market to keep your uh, profits super, super high. So that was uh, uh, an education on you know learning the real estate cycle. So subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and I'll see you on the next video. Comment below.